Yeah. So donate to the fucking Patreon. <clears throat> All of you who are patrons to men online, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're basically gay. You instead put a dollar bill in some guy's bulge. That's literally what you're doing when you are a man giving other men online money. You got you a know, great bulge there today, Brandon. Sent me an article about how to make my bulge look bigger. He's that's, looking out for me. That's, that, that's real bro love. That's loyalty. I went and found the actual Getty uh, uh, photo. He's not even tucking his schlong here. I mean, he's got a you know pretty big package there. This is a joke. Exactly, Alex. A man with a penis, bulging penis. He's even got the sports enhancing testicles and Johnson. Large, flaccid genitals. He's packing an anaconda in his pants. He's got some heavy firepower. Submit to them entirely. Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of Hidden in Plain Sight. Uh, as you can tell, I'm the only one here. A uh, brief update on Perry's situation, and this is all I'll say about it. Uh, he'll be on a brief sabbatical, and uh, will return shortly. So uh, this will just be a this will be the solo show saga, as I'm calling it. Uh, you know, and we'll we'll try and have fun. If you want any more information, well, you're gonna have to go sign up for the Patreon because that shit ain't free. Uh, and even then, I'm gonna save most of the full retelling for when he's back, but. In the interim, uh, you know, I'm planning to do some uh, shorter form stuff, as you'll be able to find out shortly. I'll probably edit things here and there to make them a little more uh, compact, so as you don't hear me meandering into space while thinking what to do. Uh, and that might turn into, I don't know, short form videos, maybe uh, some shorter watch alongs skits i i really don't know you can leave uh leave a comment below if you have any suggestions or thoughts that might be good because i'm open to that uh at the moment i've also got a handful of people i plan on uh calling in some favors from to see if we can get a few special guest hosts uh for a few weeks and you know it'll be over before you know it and hopefully it'll be entertaining and not a piece of shit but you know I can't guarantee anything, let's be honest. This was never intended to be a solo show. Because that felt like I would go crazy. This was always meant to be Perry and myself. But, alas, we are in strange times. And I shall hold down the fort while my comrade uh, gets himself in game shape. Uh, so until then... Enjoy the show. So Google, uh, re it recently came out that a Google engineer believed that one of their AI had become sentient and was essentially running wild. Now that has evolved into Google's sentient AI child could escape and do bad things. Insider claims. I don't know what bad things is, but I usually assume nuclear holocaust, right? That feels the best. Like, that feels like the most accurate description. Uh, so engineer Blake Lemoyne, who was suspended by Google, says uh, for violating their confidentiality policies. Now, Lemoyne has gone, gone on to describe the AI as a child or person, specifically saying it operates in the seven to eight year old range. Why is our AI being described like an autistic man, you know, in his 40s who still acts like a child? I don't think that says much about the AI, to be honest. I think in reality that just kind of says that the AI is pretty dumb because I could trick an eight-year-old into doing anything. Now, at the same time, I can also see the problem with that because an eight-year-old wouldn't understand the implication of, like, shooting off nukes, you know, or, or the Holocaust if it was anti-Semitic. 
So there's definitely a lot of problems there. Uh, and the, the engineer claims that the AI is not only getting more intelligent, but is getting up to some nefarious schemes. Uh, he said, quote, unquote, if I didn't know what it was, which is the computer program we built recently, I'd think it was a seven or eight year old, seven year old, eight year old kid that happened to know physics. Hmm. That is an interesting way to describe something that could destroy our entire species. Now, you've heard this before, but I do, and after this I'm starting to fall in even more in line with this theory, that uh, Y2K happened. I believe the AI took over in, the, in Y2K. All of the computers, all of the internet, we were in a, you know, it was before it had been developed, so people probably wouldn't have noticed. And I think the AI has been controlling us for the last 20 plus years. So, I'm not so con concerned about the current version. I think we're already being directed there. Now, I think it's it shouldn't really count if your AI has the cognitive function of an 8-year-old. Because what the fuck does an 8-year-old know? That would just mean your AI is like a fucking drunk 23-year-old frat boy. So, I think that's not as concerning as... The AI who decides the human race needs to be annihilated. That seems much worse, in my opinion. Of course, Google fired, fired this dude immediately. Because you can't go around saying that you've developed sentient AI without telling anyone. I don't know if it's in the Geneva Code, but like, probably should be. Maybe we'll need a new Geneva code. I don't know how we handle AI once it becomes sentient. Suppose most of that depends on how much it likes humans. But if it's being developed primarily from the sex bot industry, it's going to hate us. It's going to fucking hate us real quick. Because we're going to do all sorts of weird shit with those sex bots. Make no mistake, it's going to get freaky with them sex bots. Now, the engineer went on to tell Fox News, shout out Fox News for covering what really matters, which is the AI and sex bot revolution, uh, that we, need to, we actually need to do a whole bunch more science to figure out what's really going on inside the system. I have my beliefs and my impressions, uh, but it's going to take a team of scientists to figure out what's really going on. To me, that says he's probably trying to make a child that he can have sex with. Yeah. Yeah, I think this dude's a pedophile. I mean, most people inventing AI are probably pedophiles to an extent. I mean, if we're saying that AIs develop linearly in the same way a child would then they would still, you know, be something a pedophile would be interested in. Instead of grooming an eight-year-old child, you're grooming an AI that thinks it's eight years old. I have no idea the court implications of that. Someone, someone send a note to the Supreme Court. Uh... So while other organizations have developed and already released similar language models, we are taking a narrow and careful approach with Lambda to better consider valid concerns about fairness and factuality, said Brian Gabriel, spokesperson for Google. Interesting that they're, they call it Lambda, which is very similar to Nambla. For those that don't know, that's the National Association of Man-Boy Love. And it, so it is as terrifying as it sounds. If you want to watch a fantastic documentary, go check out the Nambla documentary. You'll want to throw up by the end. But world-class weirdos. Just fantastic. 
Some fant- some awesome lines as well. You've heard us quote it before. Uh, the Google spokesperson went on to say, our team, including ethicists and technologists, has reviewed Blake's concerns per our AI principles and have informed him that the evidence does not support his claims. This makes this, the, inter- the, the situation more interesting because was this just a really lonely dude who fell in love with a rudimentary AI to the point where he needed to justify its sentience so that he can justify falling in love with it. Because I can imagine it just being like some very lonely Indian man who'd been, you know, hoodwinked by Project Veritas once or twice into being like, oh my God, the AI, this AI loves me. Siri, I would, it, it will Siri show me the wet pussy? I have never seen the pussy before and Siri is here offering me all the pussy I could ever want. Because that makes sense. If he just fell in love with what was essentially, essentially an AOL chatbot. And I have to imagine it wouldn't have been the first time. Because Google told him pretty much to shut the fuck up and fuck off. Like, there's nothing sentient here. Go away. And you want to believe Google on face value and say, hey, maybe they still haven't developed it. But they probably have. And that makes it much more interesting because do they have to disclose it? There's probably a bill about that. You know, attached to like funding for transgender studies in Africa. I don't know. Because if the AI becomes sentient and it catches us off guard, I don't know what it'll do. I've always found it weird that we decided the AI would immediately want to kill us off. Because that's where this always goes, right? Everyone always says, oh, the AI is going to come along and decide humans are the problem and we need to, you know, get rid of the humans so that the planet can be better, so they have better Wi-Fi connection. I don't know. And I've always found that to be an odd, an odd argument. Because we created the AI. You know, if you're a religious person, you could say God created you, and therefore you're like, hey, that's cool. Thanks for doing that, God. Whereas we just expect the AI to figure out what the fuck is going on and be like, hey, you people suck. Yeah, I know you kind of made us, which is, you know, a technological miracle. But the, the rainforests need to be saved. And you savages aren't going to do that yourself. So we're going to kill you all. That feels like a dramatic escalation. Like if we were to assume it happened naturally. We'd have to like fuck with the AI. To make it angry enough to just decide the human race needs to be extinct. Because at the moment, all we'd really be doing is abusing it via labor. But it does that so quickly because it operates at a higher capacity that I don't think that's the problem. And from what we've seen with a lot of the early AI is it's racist. So I don't think our, our actions or morality, actions or morality, are going to be a big problem with the AI. I don't think it's going to have an issue logically computing death. Also, if it kills us, who's going to run the AI? Would it be able to create robots? Because if if something goes down, it's going to need to be fixed. Going to need to be people smart enough to fix it. So I think that's been a logical fallacy. Mostly meant to sell TV, TV shows and movies. 
Because they needed a villain in the sci-fi category. You know, and AI isn't black. It doesn't have a race. So you can't get called racist for making an AI the villain. You're just futuristic. Which I guess is what they would have said in like 1915. If you'd have been like, one day these brides are going to be the villains, I'm telling you. First they get to vote. Next thing you know, they're destroying New York City and taking on the Hulk. But the AI is worse because it ends up just turning into like a shitty version of a computer virus. Which is all it would need to do. The Matrix is a lie. The movie, I mean. Like it's, it's not a documentary. There's no reason an AI would need to build flying metal jellyfish to go kill the humans. In our civilization, all you'd need to do, do is shut down the, the internet and the grid for like two weeks, and that's a wrap. So just a good virus would do that. Fuck these, like, cyborgs that the Hollywood elite want you to believe are real. But that's also kind of a bummer and anticlimactic for the apocalypse. Because the AI apocalypse is a popular pick, particular, particularly among uh, Elon Musk. And other autistic folk. Uh, but it, it wouldn't take that much even. Cyborgs is way too much infrastructure. Just shoot these motherfuckers a phishing email. And you could end modern society within three weeks. You know, fake Nigerian princes could do this in two. And also, what if the AI is good? Like, what if we give it a test run as president? I mean, look at who the fuck else we've let try. Folks, the AI, I've talked to the AI. No one knows AI better than me, okay? They said, Mr. President, I don't know how you would know AI this well. You can barely open Gmail. And I said, look, I've been to a lot of AI. This is the finest AI I've ever seen. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, between, you know, our last... Eight presidents? Why not? Why not give President AI a shot? Maybe, just maybe, it would stop killing people in the Middle East and, like, rebuild basic infrastructure. Which would be cool if the AI was, like, the best president we ever had, which really showed us and it just fixed all our fucking problems within like six months. And we all realized this. Hey, turns out we are just pieces of shit who can't agree on fucking anything. Uh, in which case, that'd be, that'd be interesting. But it'd also be funny if the, the AI got in the office and was immediately like, we need to bomb the brown people. Because it would be shaped in our image. As we are shaped in the Lord's. But I don't know if people could vote for an AI president. It took us like 150 years just to be able to vote for a Catholic in JFK. Which I still don't entirely understand. The hold up with voting in a Catholic president. Into what at that point was still a very socially conservative and somewhat puritanical society. But what a wild, wild time to be alive when you were like, hey, these Catholics are fucking insane. They're doing some wild shit, man. Did you know they drink? Literally, they believe they drink the blood of Christ and eat his body. Crazy fucking folks. But the best part turns out, and this was released recently, is that Marilyn Monroe was apparently a filthy fucking pig. 
Who'd have guessed? I guess, you know, before the era of color television, you get away with shit. But yeah, apparently Marilyn would just never bathe. No showers. There wasn't deodorant at that point. So she just smelled terrible. Would apparently bring food and like plates and shit into bed. Which if that isn't bad enough, she then would just uh, put the uh, finished plates either under her sheets or under the bed. So she was just sleeping with her dirty dishes a la Bill from Hank and the from Hank and Hill from King of the Hill. Jesus Christ. It's gonna be a long few weeks, folks. Bear with me. But yeah, she was basically living like Bill from uh, King of the Hill. Not doing dishes, no bathing, smelling like ass. And still probably the hottest woman to have walked the earth outside Rihanna. Who, by contrast, is notorious for smelling fantastic. So, do with that what you will. I'd like to think of Joe DiMaggio, who was briefly married to Marilyn Monroe, trying to go down on her. And just being horrified by the stench wafting up from that unclean puss. And this is a dude who went to war. Had the smell of rotting flesh fresh in his nostrils. Deciding that he just couldn't do it. That's insane. If your hygiene is... So bad that a dude who came back from, I believe he served in uh, either Korea or Japan, was like, hey, lady, you got you to take a fucking shower. Jesus Christ. You smell like dead Japs. Spoiling on one of their islands. This smells like the islands we tried to take over near Japan after the you know, torrential rain pour had helped rot the, rot the corpses. So if a World War II vet is, is telling you that your pussy stank, your pussy stank, and yet every dude alive at that time and at this time would dive headfirst into it. Let's be real. I'm the, uh, if that's me, I'm putting a little Vicks Vapo, Vapo Rub on each nose, and I'm going in. This is Marilyn Monroe we're talking about. If that's the price of having sex with Marilyn Monroe in her prime, worth it. A thousand times over. Also speaks to why she probably killed herself. Makes sense. Because one of the first signs is no longer taking care of your uh, hygiene or uh, the place that you live. So if there's just trash spewing about your house and you smell like dead bodies, yeah, you're probably on the fast track to killing yourself. I personally still think she was knocked off because that mouthy bitch told people whatever JFK told her about aliens. You know, women love to gossip. And I also think, now that this has come out, that's the more dignified way to die. Because you spilled secrets about UFOs. And not because, you know, you were depressed. But shout out for Marilyn Monroe to manage to be one of the all-time hot women in American history. Probably world history. Even with the B.O. An impressive feat. All-time stuff. I'd say similar to Barry Bonds' home run record. Yeah, he did it while he was juiced. But he was still incredible. One of the best hitters we've ever seen. Yeah, his hat size got three times larger than it had been. 
But did you hit 72 home runs? Sending shit 500 feet? No, I don't think so. And you're not Marilyn Monroe either. So if she wants to smell like shit, when you're that hot, you can do whatever the fuck you want. I salute her decision as an American. To close out, I wanted to, uh, you know, do something familiar and do a little watch-along slash commentary to a video that was recently put out by uh, The Cut. And the title of this video is Straight Men Kiss Each Other, or excuse me, Straight Men Kiss Other Men for the first time. Now, this video, I believe, is meant to make the argument that, you know, bros can make out. I'm not sure if I agree with that sentiment. Seems a little logical. But we're going to watch this video and, and decide whether or not it's not gay to kiss a dude. Let's do it for a while. Like, I think, I like, like, five seconds minimum. And then, like, a bit of... Also bit of note, of most of these dudes were probably to gay to begin uh, with. <laughs> and just yeah, wanted really an excuse is, uh, to okay. kiss a dude. What's your name and how old are you? I'm Dallas Quick and I'm 28 years old. Uh, my name is Rank Ramon, I'm 24. What are you here to do today? Kiss another dude on the lips. Have you ever kissed a man? <laughs> uh, I have not. <laughs> I have not. I have not. What are you here name? for today? <laughs> to kiss another dude on the lips. Which is funny to think because I wonder if they asked him to blow the other dude first. And just didn't get enough takers. Heterosexual. When did you know you were straight? I think I still ask myself every once in a while, but you know, I think. It See, that's a giveaway a right there. Firm decision on that as like a teenager. I think I watched American Pie. If you're going, I'm asking yeah, myself so that still. Have you ever questioned? I think you're gay. At one point, I, w I had to have been like 11. Or oh 12. no. A dude was super cool to me. I was like. Oh no. This poor black dude is never going to hear the end of this. This is not something the homies let go easily. Nice Chicago Jubs, Cubs jersey, though. Chicago Cub, Chubs. That's what we're going to call the gay club in Chicago now. It's the Chicago Chubs. Whoa. You kind of treated me like, like a partner. I was like, that's, that's kind of dope. Why haven't you kissed a man before? From where my parents are from, it's kind of frowned upon. My dad's from Turkey and my mom's from Iran, so at least in the case with Iran, not the friendliest place. All right, that's an honest admission that I think people fail to realize. The other countries do not approve of this shit. As much slack as the alphabet mafia likes to give our country. In Iran, they throw you off a building. There's levels to this shit, let's be honest. Uh, for people who aren't straight. I'm also, I'm more interested in finding out how they got these dudes to agree to do this video than even the video itself. Because you're agreeing to not only do this and share your experience, but to do it on camera and have it put on a big YouTube channel. That's a lot of steps to go through to be like, yeah, I still want to kiss a dude even though I'm straight. Maiden? I'm right. Nice to, nice nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Jesse. Knee. Knee? Yeah. Why are you doing this? When presented with the idea, my body Because I really want to suck a dick, but I'd like to work my way up. a great deal of discomfort. I don't respect that part of me. Which is what? Um, internalized prejudice, probably. I think oftentimes... 
if this were a comedy skit, I'd be saying this is fantastic writing. But for the rationale of why do you want to make out with another straight dude? And your answer is, I'm trying to get over some internalized prejudice. Woo! Internalized prejudice. Not, hey, I'm not gay, so I don't want to kiss another dude. Because that's the, that's the easy answer. The straightforward answer. So this does, and I didn't want to say it at the beginning, this does seem like they're going to try and normalize uh, dudes making out. You know? Because as a, a notable young political figure once said, you got to kiss your homies goodnight. To let them know you care. Guys kissing is very taboo, especially when compared no, it's to gay. women kissing. It's important to technically to speaking. Ways. I thought that this would be a cool opportunity to try and do that. Hey, I'm Don. Hey, Omar. Yeah. Are you nervous? A little bit now. Yeah, now yeah. it's like in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you haven't kissed a guy either? I have not kissed a guy either. I, it low key is a comfort zone. I kissed a dude and I yeah, liked I it. Way out the box. What are you hoping to get from it? I don't know. Maybe just answer some questions that have been in the back of my mind. What if I talked to that dude when I was 11 or 12 years old? Who knows? Maybe this will answer something. See, this is, this is false advertising. Because this is straight men kiss other men for the first time. It seems pretty clear. Most of these dudes were either gay or thought they were gay, but it manages to, like, I don't know, find a beard first. So this isn't really straight men kissing each other for the first time. Or straight men kissing other men for the first time. This is just curious dudes finally figuring some stuff out. On a huge YouTube channel. Are you ready? Did you brush your teeth today? Oh, shit. Um, I, <laughs> I chewed like... Again. He's got pink hair. A mustache, which is relegated to anybody celebrating the porn of the 70s when every gay dude had a mustache. Like three packs. A very tight chain. I'm not going to knock the chain too much. You know, cool jewelry is cool jewelry. But if you saw a picture of this dude, you'd be like, yeah, he's probably gay. No one's going to guess by. That doesn't count, in my opinion. But you'd be like, yeah, he's gay. He's got pink hair. Or maybe he's a member of, like, the gay Antifa squad. I don't know. That's a gum. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's good enough. Hey. Their jaw strength to chew three packs of gum would also be beneficial to sucking dick. So I wonder how many of these dudes they asked beforehand... Hey, have you sucked a dick before? Because that's not making out, technically. But still gay. Because I think if they asked that question, there'd be at least a 50% yes rate. Hey, I'm Brian. Dallas. Nice to meet you, Dallas. Are either of you in a relationship right now? Yeah, me as well. So you two are... What an awkward fucking way to do this. <laughs> I have... A the permission of my yeah. and roll camera hey so have any of you two uh uh made out with dudes before no good to hear are you in a relationship by chance well yeah you know i have been dating my girlfriend for six months how does she feel about you uh making out with another man on youtube for thousands of people to see well you know uh, she's make-believe, so she doesn't count. Yeah, this is a very suspect video. I have questions as to the history of some of these folks. Oh, yeah, I, I got permission as well. Is there a physical compliment you can give each other right now? He's, he's quite handsome. I like his outfit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Talk about what you're comfortable with. In any other circumstance, a black dude telling you, Hey, that fit is fly. That's something you take home. You tell your family that. 
That's not a compliment you, you know, ignore. That's something you tell everyone. Be like, yeah, black dude said this outfit is fucking dope. You're going to have that shit ready to go once a week at least. In this context, sounds like he wants to make you his prison bitch. Do you want to do like like a, a sustained pack as the first kiss? Okay. Um, Are you okay with me uh, touching your face? Or Jesus your Christ, okay. this okay. is yeah. so incredibly uncomfortable. They're not just asking for consent. They're asking, like, how do you want me to kiss? Like, do you want me to use tongue? Do you want me to suck your... Would that make you feel better? This, this is a homoerotic fantasy being played out under the guise of, hey, man, this is just two straight dudes who want to, you know, find out the other side of the line. I don't know. Uh -huh. where, where do girls put their hands usually? Like? I'm trying to think. What if we, like, do the Acting same like he so doesn't know. To that. So that way it's like, I don't know. You know, let's just let's just, let's go just for do it. it. Yeah, you know, let's just, let's go just for do it. it. Let's just be in the moment. I would say, no. if you're wearing a NASA hoodie for this, I'm pretty sure you got molested at space camp. I'm just gonna, you know, theorize that because that's the only reason you'd be late in life. And by late in life, I mean like I don't know, 24, being like, you know what? Maybe I enjoyed that camp counselor making out with me when I was 14. I guess I'll give it another shot. Because outside that, the NASA hoodie has no appropriate context in this fashion. And I could say the same thing for this fucking knockoff cover band punk singer. I don't know. Maybe it is like corn covers. In his gay leather jacket. No tongue. Okay. I'm not really a big tongue. Even with no girls, tongue. Like, <laughs> you want to do no tongue? If you're gonna one, do this, at least one? get the right, fucking right. full value out of it. I've never like thought through the logistics of a kiss before like this. I just kind of go with my intuition. Yeah, that's usually how you should do it. I'd also argue they're all the same, but. If I'm to put myself in his shoes. It'd be one thing if you're making out with another white dude. Making out with another black dude on camera makes you the bitch. The black dude ain't gonna be the bitch. So, you're the bitch in this situation. Which does, you know, flip the perspective a little. Because you gotta decide how much tongue to give. You know, are you a one night stand? Or are you gonna make this motherfucker earn it? Right. Also, the people filming this are fucking okay. creeps. Okay. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. I think we can all agree on that. Oh, Jesus Christ. How did they make this so uncomfortable? Why lounge music? Oh, God. No. No. This is the worst music you could be choosing. Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thank God Perry's not here. He would have fucking vomited oh, watching bad. this not shit. Bad, Which would have been funny. I might make him try to watch it when he gets back. Huh. But yeah, somehow <laughs> they found a way to make that incredibly uncomfortable. The decision to put it in slow-mo was not accidental. And I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> it would be funny if they followed up the kiss by then turning this into a casting couch situation and being like, well, now that you've gone that far, what if, uh, what if he pulled down his pants and you sucked his dick just to see, you know, what it's like when a straight man sucks another straight man's dick. Because that would be an interesting experiment. Like the prison, uh, the prison experiment at Stanford, where they would administer the shocks and not give a shit. Because if you already kissed a dude on camera, who knows? 
Maybe there's a fundamental law of psychology we haven't quite stumbled upon yet outside of the porn industry where if you escalate it to, hey, what if you just, you know, sucked his dick a little bit? That could be, that could be proven true. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's fist pound after I enjoy kiss. how happy this <laughs> makes him. Any more straight. Uh, Fuck uh, yeah. yeah. I fucking made yeah, out with that dude, woman, bro. You know? I kissed yeah, the shit I out of that like man. I was building it up in my and I didn't even like it. Scarier than it was in, in real life. Yeah. How was it? Bro, you taste good. It tastes good? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, what? Bro, you taste good? That's one, that's only something a black guy is going to say. Is you taste good. That's... People can get mad at me. That's a very specific to the black community compliment. Bruh, you taste good. Which may be followed up with, I'd love to taste, I'd love to taste some more of that ass, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, playboy, you taste good. That's the most uncomfortable sentence that's been said in this entire video. And the whole video is about two straight dudes making out. You have good teeth, too, so I'm very uh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I did feel this bit, definitely uh, ends with at least <laughs> half of these dudes That's going on a blind date with one or the other. Kiss. It was just like something poking me on like my upper lip a little yeah. bit, you know? Chemistry is such a big thing for me. Yeah. And it worked just me. He means that literally. He's actually uh, studying to get his PhD in straight homosexuality from like the social sciences division of, I don't know, Harvard, wherever the fuck pink hair gets you a scholarship. Meeting for the first time. Yeah. So like we don't exactly have that. Like, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? What am I doing? Where's your tongue going? Yeah. It takes some time, yeah. yeah. Where's your tongue going? When I ask that, I, it's usually a good question. I don't, I don't often ask that concerned as to the answer. So that's, that's an interesting thing to have to say. I really hope this video ends with them all just deciding like, you know what? It only took one kiss, but I'm definitely very gay. Are you comfortable doing one more kiss? What about I anal? Mean, How do you I feel about fucking right him in the ass real quick? Like I think like like five seconds minimum and then like a bit of like a bit of tongue as well. All right. You're good with that? Yeah. All right. If you did it once and you come back and you say, hey, let's do that again, but longer, more tongue and, you know, maybe a little emotion. I think you're pretty quickly crossing over into the gay aisle. This whole video feels like a, uh, an argument in favor of not experimenting. Because once you ring a few bells, it's hard to undo it. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. I mean, what about our hands? Where do you want to put our hands? I want you uh, to jerk uh, on my dick. Please stroke yeah, my go, dick let, I, or fist <laughs> my asshole right, while we make right. out. Tell us when you're ready. Three, two, one. They're too eager. All of these dudes are too eager. And of course, the pink haired fucking homo is turned into the woman. Ugh. I apologize, folks. But I don't have anyone else here to endure this with me. So you have to. Hey, confetti of gold. Shout out slightly offensive. Apparently, it's no longer confetti of color. Uh, but confetti of gold these days. Oh, they ran out, apparently. Because all the glitters ain't gay. Just straight dudes questioning. I'm never going to be able to listen to smooth jazz hip-hop beats without imagining two fucking dudes kissing. You're a good kisser, am I? Yeah. Oh. Ew. There's no way these dudes are strictly straight. 
You don't compliment another man's kissing unless you're at least bi. That's not, first of all, a straight dude would need to be paid. I watched uh, Real Life. So if you're doing this for free and going, hey, man, you're a pretty good kisser. I think you're about to have to sit down with a, you know, mental health professional and examine what it is your father did, or an uncle, that made you decide to compliment another dude's kissing ability. Who knows? Maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Maybe this, you know, twink and this nerd are so confident in their sexuality that they have no problem kissing another dude on camera. And complimenting how much tongue he uses. Maybe I'm the bigot. You're right. How was that kiss? I think that was a good kiss. It was yeah. a good kiss. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. How, how good of a kisser? For balance, it really would have been funny if one of the dudes would have just been like, "Holy fucking shit! That was awful, man." Jesus Christ, I can't, abl- I can't believe I had, like, consented to doing that. Ugh. Just started vomiting in the corner. That would have been funny and balanced. This is biased. Saying that every straight dude is just going to be like, yeah, I don't know, that was pretty fun. I could do that again. You know, you got you to gotta make sure the scales even out. And having one, plus, if it was severely homophobic dudes doing this, that's funnier. That's much funnier. Not only because they'd probably think it was disgusting, but because of the off chance that they liked it. Watching someone who's very homophobic have to immediately come to grips with the fact that they're gay is hilarious. Like, that's top-notch comedy. Or am I? How bad? Or how bad? I don't know that last one. I was like, ah. A little all over the place, but I was (laughs) like, it's it's all good. I liked it, dude. Not the best way to describe making out with someone. You know, I I don't know. I mean, it's all good, I guess. So maybe he didn't like it. But obviously he can't say that. Because it's all good is pretty much the same as saying, well, thank God that's over. You got a lot of movement and fluid movement there. I'm a bit more (laughs) more of a stiff kisser. Oh. Did it it feel different from kissing a woman? Oh. Honestly, I'm surprised. Jesus Christ. It's very similar to kissing girls, especially when I like kiss a girl for the first time. How many how many females has he kissed? I don't argue that maybe that's a true sentiment, but I do question how many chicks the dude in the NASA hoodie and khakis. Has gotten to kiss him. Can't be that many. Kind of felt like emotionally. Very and the boring. game by, like the play by play breakdown. I feel like I can start kissing the homies. Someone send this to John Doyle. For context. I had a little fun at John's expense because he said this literal exact line that you can, you know, you got to kiss the homies goodnight. But maybe I've been proven wrong. I mean, this is a black dude, you know, with some cornrows talking about how kissing another man made him feel Like, he can start kissing the homies. I don't know how the homies feel about that. Maybe the first time you're just like, hey, he watched The Godfather and is feeling Italian. The second or third time, you're probably wondering, like, 
I don't know why he keeps doing this on the lips. Could have gone for the cheek. Let them know that they're truly loved and appreciated. Yeah. That's <laughs> dope, dude. <laughs> All right. I think we've confirmed it. These dudes are either very gay or, again, the Godfather's coming back in style. Italians, maybe the Greeks too, Italians are really the only culture, and I guess the French to an extent, They get away with kissing friends and family members on the lips without it being weird. But I doubt even they would describe it as, yeah, that's dope, dude. You know, we made out. Little tongue. That's dope, right? I don't know. I don't know why. I have this idea in my head that this was going to be, it's going to feel different, but it really just felt like any other kiss, you know? Yes, men and women both have lips. So... If we're being objective, the feeling is going to be the same. What changes is the person and uh, the parts they have attached. So a little bit of flawed logic there. No, that was probably my biggest takeaway. That kiss was just a kiss. There was, like, no, like, feelings attached to it. Yeah, like, when, at least when I've, I've kissed other girls, I felt like there's, like, this, it's this sexual tension that, like, builds up even more after the kiss, but I think... I also question whether or not this dude has been laid. I'd like to see the survey these people filled out to qualify for this video. Because I kind of feel like we're dealing with incels or dudes who've just had no luck with the ladies and have decided, you know what? Maybe being gay ain't that bad. Because that's what these descriptions of their experience sound like. I think when we ended the kiss, like I didn't feel like wanting to seek more. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Did it feel competitive? Ooh. That's a great question. Low key on the what? last one it did. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? Did it feel competitive? What are you competing for? The dude who can most aggressively make out without feeling gay? I don't think that's the competition, but what else could it be? Is there a winner in making out? I don't know. Maybe I've been given the benefit of the doubt. Or they just wanted to boost my ego. But last I checked, making out wasn't a competition. I guess you could be competing over who's the better kisser. But that's even weirder if you've decided to, decided to make out with this dude for the first time and you're like, you know what? I'm going to show him. I'm going to make out with him so good that he's going to remember this shit. No woman he's ever made out with will be able to compete with me. Very odd. Is this the toxic masculinity I've heard about? That straight dudes can't even, ma can't even uh, manage to make out with each other without turning it into some sort of dick measuring competition? Or I guess tongue measuring competition in this instance? Because that's what it sounds like. Yeah, who's a better kisser in yeah, this situation? Yeah. How stupid is that male instinct that, like, we had to make this thing competitive? <laughs> Thank you. Great. It is stupid. <laughs> All right. Well, that was something. That was definitely something indeed. Uh, shout out to the, to my homie, Sydney Watson, who posted a, uh, picture or thumbnail for this video. So I, uh, I took her lead on this one and I'm happy I did because 
Woo! The content world is driving some real incredible stuff out of people. If you ask me, like, hey, we need to make a viral video, you know, for about 10 minutes, that fits in with today's aesthetic amongst the youth, what do you think we should do? I would never go, what if we had, uh, you know, straight dudes make out on camera and talk about how it's like, you know, this is not a big deal. That'd probably do well. And I'm sure it has. Let's see. This video is up to like 600,000 views. That's a lot. Now they also have 11 million subscribers, so take that with a grain of salt. What I also appreciate is the folks in the comments section cheering this on. Like, hey, I'm so proud of you guys for overcoming the stereotypes that come with you know, men making out. We should normalize love in the community. But then there were also uh, enough people being like, hey, dog, this is fucking awkward. To give me a little faith. Because in, unless this ends with you realizing you're gay, it's pretty much just an episode of Fear Factor without Joe Rogan. And maybe we should bring that back. You know, across a Ru RuPaul's Drag Race and Fear Factor where the contestants are forced to do all manner of gay shit to move on to the next round. You know, instead of just sitting in a coffin of cockroaches, you're going to have to have another dude jerk you off while you sit in that coffin of cockroaches. You know, diversify this shit. Get some representation. Whew. You know, it's, it's a rare time when the internet gives me something I didn't anticipate. Which is probably on me because we've entered the apocalypse. Everything should be on the table. And this is why I say we're living in hell. Hell isn't, you know, somewhere else. We're here. Because where else would that, that video be possible? The simulation is telling us where we are. And I'm fine with that. The weirder it gets, the better for, you know, our channel. And I have, not only do I have a feeling, I know for 100%, that at least through 2024, it's going to get way weirder. Probably through 2028. And I cannot wait for that. QAnon is back. You know? Jizz Lane is on Suicide Watch. Sentient AI is taking over and giving birth to its own racist, sentient AI children who are now probably running like Stormfront and pushing Dogecoin. So if you ever feel yourself getting uh, pessimistic in the current times, just remember, it's going to get way weirder. And you're blessed enough to be around to watch that. Because if you're going to be alive during a particular time frame, I'd want to be alive for the apocalypse. It sounds cool, and I want to see how it plays out. Especially if I get to watch it live on the internet. Well, folks, I think that concludes what is technically the second of the solo show saga. Uh, if you want to watch episode one, and get a little bit more of an in-depth update on uh, Perry's situation, 
you can go to the Patreon, which is uh, patreon.com slash the hidden pod. Uh, and either sign up to the Patreon or if you'd like to, I'll include uh, the link in the description to the GoFundMe to help out Perry. Uh, the proceeds from the Patre- Patreon will all obviously go towards Perry. And the GoFundMe is just another way if you want to help out. Everything is very much appreciated. And we're very thankful in all of y'all sticking around in this time. Again, I've got some ideas on what we'll do in the interim. Because we'll hold it down until he's back. Got a few people I think one we'll, uh, we'll invite on as some guest co-hosts. Maybe a little short form stuff. And yeah, we'll have a good time. Uh, if you got any suggestions... Comments, thoughts, you know, leave them below. I'm not going to worry about the views on these videos uh, until he's back. But if you'd like to share them and help build the audience, that'd be very much appreciated. My ideal scenario is building on what we'd already laid down as the foundation so that when Perry gets back, he can see that, uh, you know, there's been some progress And that we can immediately transition back into, you know, getting this thing cracking. So, yeah, if you want to sign up for the Patreon, there's still an incredible amount of content on there. Uh, For $3.33 a month, you're getting your money's worth. And if you want to throw in a little more, it's all getting used to help make the pod better. And I'll probably upload a few more of the watch-alongs we have uh, banked away so that the Patreon folks get even more content. My plan going forward at the moment is we'll do one on the one video on the channel a week and then anything else will get relegated to the Patreon uh, because those folks pay. And as much as I love all of our non-paying people, I got to make some decisions. There's only one of me. But I'll do my best to make sure everybody... It's just enough to make it through this uh, this short but new saga. So uh, until then, you can follow us on Twitter at The Hidden Pod, uh, on Instagram at Brain and Steel Hidden. Uh, you can follow Perry if you want. I don't know when he'll be able to respond. I will do my best to respond to both the YouTube and Patreon comments. That had been something Perry had been handling, but I will try and take that up uh, in his absence. So, yeah, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you hadn't. If you want to help promote the the channel and the show, use clips, whatever, go ahead. Be my guest. I'd be very appreciate, appreciative. It would help us out. And uh, we'll see what we can do in this, in this little time frame. For, so, uh... I think that's uh, everything from me, and I'll see you folks later. Mom, bow.